Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the need for classification, the modern classification system, binomial naming, and then we'll finish with a summary. So obviously the planet has lots and lots of different species present on it at the moment, and it has done for a long time. And therefore we need a way of categorizing them into the right areas. Classifying all of these species helps us to understand their biology and how they relate to each other, and it also helps us identifying any new species that we might discover easier because we can put them in the right categories that have been pre-designed. So classification is the process of sorting the living things on this earth into groups. So in the year 1735 there was a scientist called Carl Linneo, or Linné, or however you'd like to pronounce that, published a hierarchical system, so a system with several layers and a hierarchy to it, which would be used to classify all different species. So the system he designed had these different layers and as we went down the layers, you get more and more subgroups, and eventually you get right down to a specific organism in its right place. Therefore, all of these organisms belong to particular subgroups and groups. So how does the modern classification system work? So the scientists classified all of the known organisms that we can identify on the Earth into distinct categories, and they had eight main hierarchical levels. So these levels in order, which we'll go through now, are domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So this is the system of classification. We'll go through each of these terms one at a time so that they'd make a bit more sense. But overall, if we found a new species, they get classed first into a domain, and then out of those domains, we put them into a kingdom, and then a phylum, and eventually they all have a particular type of one of these until you get right down to the species representing this individual organism. So the domain is the top ranking taxonomic rank in this system and it contains three groups so we can have three domains and those domains are eukaryote or eukaryotes, archaea and bacteria. So basically they classify all organisms into one of these three domains based on the type of cells that the organism has. So we have eukaryotes, we have archaea, which have particular features to them like resistance to high temperatures, and bacteria, for example prokaryotes. After we've classified them into three domains, we then choose their kingdom. So there's four eukaryote domains. So after we've chosen that something is a eukaryote, within that we would have four kingdoms. So these four kingdoms are called animalia, plantae, fungi, and protoctista. So again, under the heading of eukaryote, or eukaryotes, we've got plants, fungi, or we've got animalia, or animals, and protoctista. And then there's another kingdom called the single-celled prokaryota. So this would be prokaryotes. So essentially, once we've chosen the domain, we chose the kingdom. And then we choose the next level and the next level. So this is explaining that hierarchical system that the scientists designed. We then choose the right phylum. So organisms here get based on certain basic body designs. For example, whether they have a backbone. So snakes, for example, do have a backbone. And so we class them in an area or a phylum called vertebrates. Whereas certain insects, like ants, millipedes, beetles, don't have backbone. And so we class them as invertebrates. And there are some other physical or body designs that can group these things into phylums, or phyla. The next level is class. So here organisms get grouped based on their general traits. For example, the number of limbs that they have, number of eyes, etc. So for example, ants are classed as an insect because they have a certain number of legs. And we've got ticks, spiders, etc. They have eight legs, so they're classed as arachnids. So sort of similar traits grouped together. We then have things divided into orders. So this is a further division based on specific information like wolves and cows belonging in the mammalian species. So for example, mammals all breed live young. They feed them through milk. They have certain properties to their physiology, etc. So we've got things like mammals, reptiles, birds, groups of organisms that share very similar physiology. Then we have families, so a group of closely related genera, like dogs and cats. So obviously there's lots of variation within dogs and cats, but we give them the family of being canines for dogs and felines for cats. So we're sort of dividing them into groups now. 
Penultimate would even have genus so, or genus, so closely related species. For example, the hominid genus contains Homo erectus and Homo sapien. So these are two types of kind of early human, Homo sapien and Homo erectus. Both come under the same genus of hominid, but they're two different species. So genuses connect species that are very similar under the same umbrella. And then under this, we have specific species. So the basic unit of classification is a species. And in a species, all of the organisms in that species show very little variation. There is some genetic variation between them. So for example, all tigers in a population will have certain differences, as do humans. But overall, they're different enough to be a different species to, say, lions or bears. So species is the last level. In order to classify organisms into a particular rank, we have to use a common global way of classifying them. So a global classification system, although this can be quite difficult because there are differences in language. For example, this could be called a mountain lion. Some may call it a puma. So there's various names for the same organism. So we need a global system so that it's a lot easier to transfer information about them. So to solve this problem, we have a binomial naming system. So the binomial naming system uses the genus name and the species name to avoid any confusion when naming a species. So all we do is we have the genus followed by the species, and that's how we would name every organism possible on the planet. So there's two ways to write this. If you're writing it by pen or by hand, you would write the genus followed by the species, and then you would underline each word. Because if you're typing, you can do italics. If you're writing, it's very hard to emphasize italics. If you've already used it once and you're referring to it again, you can just simply write g dot species for an abbreviation because they know what you're talking about. So in this case, instead of being called the mountain lion or the puma, this animal is called puma, which is the genus, concolor, which is the species. So there may be other species with the same genus, so there'll be puma something else, puma something else. But this one specifically, is this, and if I wrote this again in the same paragraph, I could write P concolor to save time. So humans, including us, are homo sapien or sapien or H dot sapiens because we are the species sapiens in the genus of homo. So if we look at these groups of similarly related genuses, these two come under the genus of homo, whereas these two might be different genuses. And then within the genus homo, we've got two species, one of which is the sapien species, which means that we as humans are homo sapiens. So whenever we get a new species identified, we name it with a scientific name based on its classification as well as a common name. So this could be the psychedelic frogfish, but it's also known in its binomial name as a histiophrine psychedelia. So it kind of can be named in two different ways, a scientific name and a common name. The common name would be the psychedelic frogfish. The scientific name relates to the genus and the species. So this table is an example of some taxonomic classifications for three different species. So it's asking us, what are their scientific names? So we've got the gorilla, and we've got all the way down from domain to species. So the gorilla is Eukaryota, Animalia, Chordata, Mammalia, Primate, Hominidae, Gorilla, Gorilla. But obviously that's way too long to use in general terms. So the scientific name, is Gorilla Gorilla. The scientific name for a death cap mushroom is Aminata phalloid or phalloides. The fruit fly is called Drosophila melanogaster. So it's a global scientific way of naming things. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.